What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Today I'll be taking you through my ultimate horde base design. A horde base that can hold up to any zombie horde thrown at it. It will utilize a combination of all available traps without utilizing any mechanics that are too cheesy. I originally designed this base in my Darkness Falls series and it even held up relatively well to an end game insane nightmare horde. If you're looking for a base that will withstand the test of time across all mods, look no further. Let's begin. So essentially, you have four fighting positions and I only have one of them that I've really fully fleshed out with all of the features with the pit down there so always can jump out and um, all the fancy business up here and the rest of the three positions are fully functional however they're not all dressed up with all the fancy business that we have on the eastern position so the whole premise of the game is basically just the meta you want to bring the zombies up to your elevation with a nice ramp we have an automated vault door to regulate traffic that is hooked up to a switch internally we have a nice centered security gate and a centered 25 centimeter pole piece for the zombies to stand on and inevitably fall off of. We have a total of 10 um, electric fence wires that are stringing through here, including two final ones going through the fighting position so that if zombies do break in and they're trying to jump in, they will get shocked. Two steel hatches defend you on the top, one on the bottom, as well as these couple of blocks right here. And you have two grenade chutes so that you can see what the zombies are doing down there on the bottom. I gave the zombies two options, one being using ladders and the other is to jump on out using those jumping stairs. In case things are getting hot or you need to take a little bit of a break to go upstairs and see what's going on, you can turn this switch on right here which activates the dart trap and opens this vault door, basically stabbing any zombie that would be coming up right in the face. And when you're done with that, you just shut that right off. These are the power and control rooms. Now I know it looks like a mess, but uh, there's no other way to do it, at least in Alpha 20. In Alpha 21, they'll be hiding all the wires. So this um, switch right there goes to the door, the blade trap that's on the roof, and all these electric fences. So this, this switch right here controls everything on this side, this switch for this side, and so on. There's another control room directly over here, which mirrors the, the last one. And you can store the rest of your Horde Knight supplies right in there. Let's take a look at the rooftop. The rooftop has four blade traps. Only one needs to be active at a time. This should be directly over your head if you are standing at the specified fighting position. And this central hatch here will take you all the way into the sort of bowels of the base. And this is where I've stored the generators. All right, I'd say we're just about ready to go. We've got side number one spinning and ready to go. We've got Temcam in position. Hello there, sir. Nice shoes, buddy. The only thing left to do right now is check our game stage. We are game stage 360 right now, and that's because it's only like day number one right now. But set time, day 7,000, 0 and we'll take a look. And that's going to spin us up to 720. So this is a strong as a horde will get let's see how we do all right here they are coming around now sometimes it does take them a minute to sort of realize what the way to get to you is and so they'll kind of beat on the supports and wander around and just be a general zombie nuisance but they will eventually figure out what the hell they're supposed to be doing and they'll come straight up to you sometimes i've, I've found it helpful to just go to your switch for the door and kind of like flick it and, and reset it real quick to see if that'll kind of straighten them back out again. So for this battle, I've just given myself a quality five double barrel shotgun with a couple of mods on it, including a rad remover. <laughs> I figured you should have at least this by day 7,000, or at least by the time you're fighting like a decent sized board here at this position. Ideally, you'd probably want some, uh, you know, armor penetrating ammo. You maybe want to um, have multiple different ammo types to go through, explosives for sure. In fact, I probably I'll probably just give myself some pipe bombs so we can see how that performs here. Okay, we just had our first demo blast of the night. Doesn't look like any serious damage happened down there, though. It happened in the pit, fortunately. Speaking of the pit, let's take a look down there and see if we can start hucking some pipe bombs down at him. It does look like the dogs like to use the jumpy steps to get out, and the regular zombies like to use the ladders to get out. So even though this is a 64 zombie horde, it's there's just there's so much area for the zombies that they would never be able to bring down any section of the base. They could really pound on this all night long, uninterrupted, without me fighting back at all, and they would not be they would not have enough time to bring down the entire base under normal circumstances. Now, if you're playing on Apocalypse now and you've got like you know mega demolition zombies. The story might be a little bit different, so you'll have to adapt this base to whatever mod that you're playing on. 
Now, if you look closely at the the ramp leading up to our position here, we use the Catwalk V2 triangular plates, and we'll get into that more during the base build, but I just wanted to point out the fact that the zombies are having no issue. They're not getting stuck there at all. They're not trying to jump up on the ramp from the side. You don't need to do those flanged stairs like a lot of other people do. This is um, more aesthetically pleasing to me, at least. It looks nicer when they're painted up and um, just functions just as well, if not better, than any other design that I've seen. Okay, I haven't seen a demo here, so the next one I see, I'm going to intentionally set him off. It is just past midnight, so we're probably through the first wave of zombies. Usually a wave of zombies lasts two hours or until you kill it, whichever comes sooner. So it might be that this next wave here just doesn't have demos in it. Not all waves do, and even the ones that do only have a percentage chance to have them spawn in. But it's no matter, without demos, this horde really doesn't stand a chance. So we'll just mow right through this whole horde and until we find the next demo. And then we're going to set them off just to see how strong the base is. Okay, it does look like the demos have arrived again. Although we're not onto the third wave that I know of. We might have just been getting, um, by chance, not getting any zombies there for a little bit. A couple cops there. I'm just going to let them blow up, though. Okay, there he is. And I've got a good chance to set up the button there. Okay, there we go. Ooh, ow. Yes, definitely did some damage there. Right, it does appear as though the 25 centimeter pillar, as well as the security gate, were both destroyed. However, the bottom 25 centimeter pillar is still intact, and therefore the pathway is still good. Now, at this point, probably the best thing to do would be to um, allow the zombies to come to a different position. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and switch this off and switch this one on. And we just gotta fend off the couple of stragglers that are stuck over here. Oh, ow! For whatever reason. And that'll give the zombies a minute to kind of reorient back around. I don't really know what this spider zombie here is standing on. <laughs> you know, just perfect game with no bugs situation right there, I think. Yeah, see, this is like still perfectly intact. That pole right there, I don't think that's taking any damage. So yeah, zombies are just, they're mad right now. They're trying to figure out what the hell they're supposed to be doing. And what they're supposed to be doing is coming straight over here. So like I said before, I'm just going to snap this. And sometimes that kind of helps get them straightened out. Yep, here they go. Let's just start things off with a bang on this one. You see, the disadvantage that we face with this one without having a pit is that the zombies, when they fall down, unless they're stun locked from the electric fences or they're going into rage mode and just beating a nearby block, you're not going to get a good enough cluster of them to really get very much bang for your buck out of the pipe bombs. I mean, certainly you'll get some, but I don't think it's going to be quite as good as if you had a pit with like some sort of a funnel for them to get out of. And so even though yet again, I have intentionally set off a demolition zombie, um, the pathway is still good to go. They can still make their way over to me without any significant problem, and that's really not going to change anytime soon unless more cops blow up or a demolition zombie comes by again. And really the beauty of this base is that you have so many fallback positions. It's not meant for you to conduct repairs as the Horde Knight is ongoing, although you certainly could. You could just leave them stun locked in one position and then come out to the position that you just turned away from and conduct some repairs out there and then come back and kind of, you know, reset, rearm, refuel, keep going. So again, I just knocked out that uh, whole corridor there with one last demo zombie. So we'll just give the zombies a minute to catch their breath and then I'm going to shut off lane number two and we're going to spin them up on lane number three. So right over here, there should be another switch. Turn that on and give them just a couple of seconds to come right up. Oh no, in fact, um, they have knocked out number three. So I guess, <laughs> how's number four doing? <laughs> number four is looking pretty good. Yeah, so sometimes they do, um, I don't know why, they um, just randomly will beat on blocks until they're destroyed, but number four it is. So what we'll do on this one, it's about to tick morning anyway. Let's um, turn on the dart trap system and see how this works. And while that's shooting, I'm just gonna head up to the rooftop and yeah, we didn't get any birds all night long, but I guarantee you if we did um, that they wouldn't stand a chance against these blade traps here. So as the dart trap helps us, I'm just going to sit here and pick off zombies. All right, just wrap things up here. Last couple of zombies. The dart trap really helps out, but I'm not sure like how well a rad can kind of overcome that with their healing. And just like that, I think we are just about done here. So I'm going to head down and turn that off. 
And oh, bye, Tem Camp. <laughs> he, he must be hungry. All right, so that is it. Let's fly out here and just evaluate the damage here. Okay, extra crawler. Don't need that. So yeah, this is the same thing that I observed in my Darkness Falls series. They like to kind of beat their way in. They think that like going through here into here and then out this way is faster than just going around. Maybe that's something to do with the shape selection that I chose for this portion here. But anyway, the pit here held up remarkably well despite a couple of demo blasts. This portion up here held up pretty well as well. Now, as we get into the later parts of the video and I explain my thought process in the design here, you'll know that um, some of these blocks are offering shielding. You can see this triangle, or no, this diamond that I built here, this one here is completely destroyed. This one is all but destroyed on this one corner here, but the blocks behind those blocks were almost completely perfectly shielded. Like, these blocks barely took any damage at all over here. In fact, these ones are almost 100%. I would recommend that you find a system to do the same thing over here on this side because currently there's only one layer before the um, fences are exposed back here. But if you put another block layer, even if it was a system like this where there is exposure, um, the cop blast or demo blast will not damage the blocks that are behind, even though I can kind of like punch through the gaps here. An explosion cannot. Okay, so that's it for the tour and the demonstration piece. We'll now move on to the construction piece and I'll break down how to build this from the ground up. Let's begin. Okay, good morning everyone. So before we get started here, I just wanna let you know that this is gonna be all done in God mode, just to save me some time because this is more of a demonstration than it is like actually me building this in a survival series. If you do wanna see this built in a survival series, I will link a video right here to my Darkness Falls series where I built this all within the course of one episode. And you can check a timestamp within that video if you'd like to just see the building montage. Anyway, if you want to use dev mode, you're going to press F1, hit DM. That will toggle the debug menu. That's dev mode. And then you'll be able to hit Q and fly around like this and be invincible. If you want the dev super digger tool, you're going to click CM instead of DM. And that will toggle on the creative menu. Then you hit U. And then you're going to make sure that this button up here is toggled on. This is dev blocks and you just type in dev and it'll pull up all of the dev tools, including the insta death pistol and the super digger, which we'll be using just to one shot destroy blocks. Now, this is Temcam here. He'll be helping us get some of these uh, shots today. And I've already placed down a land claim block here in what I will say is going to be the middle of the base. Now, to start things off, you're going to put blocks out from the center, 10 blocks in each direction. And you notice I put these sort of flanges on the side that kind of uh, are five wide. And this is all just for measurement purposes because this is gonna help us build the curvature around the side to make it into a complete circle. Okay, so now that I have this mapped out, I'm kind of thinking that probably we should have like a slab, like a nice concrete slab to put all of this on. You don't really, you know, sometimes you can get away with building on top of topsoil like this, but not always. Okay, I appear to be right on the corner and I'm gonna break that block. Same thing over here on this corner. Go back into those dev tools and I'm gonna get the admin block replace tool. Just press Z here. If you ever press Z and you're in God mode and you wanna delete that, you just hit the backspace button. So we'll grab this, bring it over to here. And I'm just gonna put a concrete cube there for a minute so that I can copy it. Just left click to copy the concrete cube. We're gonna replace all blocks of the same type. You hold R to get the radial menu to do this. And then you just give it a good right click whack and that puts down a nice pad for us, isn't it? Oh yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so this is perhaps the most technical part of the build. So these, these frames here are all just for measurement purposes. Now we're gonna start working with the permanent placements. It starts off with wedge narrow high, followed by wedge narrow middle, followed by wedge 60 tip, then wedge 60, then I think it's three cube corner beveled blocks, and then you'll go right backwards with another wedge 60, wedge 60 tip, Wedge narrow middle, wedge narrow high. Okay, I know that's boring and technical, so let me show you how it looks. In all cases, you want advanced rotation, and it should be really easy to just visualize this flushing up. So we can copy rotation for that one. I think we can also copy rotation for this one, yes. Copy rotation, put this one just like that. And you'll have to excuse me, this was two of these in order to line everything up properly, because look, we're right in the middle. This is the middle block right here, and then we're just going backwards from there. Okay, so set that in, grab the next block, copy rotation, set that in, copy rotation, set it, copy rotation, one more, and that's it for your circle. 
I prefer the cube quarter here. So we set that in and that just gives it a little bit more texture and it looks really nice when it's painted. So we're gonna go with that all the way around. And what I will in fact do is I will start painting this so we can see it better from the alternative camera views. And if you're in dev mode, you can hold the radial menu and you can say materials and then you can just pick the paint color from there. Save you, save yourself some time later on. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna finish out the circle and I'm gonna build this up you can do any height that you want. I would say probably a minimum of four blocks tall, but preferably like five or six, but you could even go 10 or 20 if you wanted to, just depending on what kind of a structure you wanted to do. I think for today, let's do something like right in the middle. Let's do let's do eight blocks tall from here and then we'll stop and sort of reevaluate. Okay, so we've successfully created the bottom part of the shell of the base. This is definitely going to be overkill. No, I never said this was going to be the most efficient horde base design, but it's going to be the coolest looking and the strongest. I will guarantee you that. So yeah, we went up a total of eight, probably double what you would have to do. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm gonna put a floor in. Okay, from here what I'm gonna do is just kinda connect them so you can walk between them and this will create the foundation of the actual base. Like the center portion of the base that is. All four of these wings will be utilized but this is where all the action will take place right here in the middle. So we're gonna fill this in with the exception of the very middle and I think we can probably utilize that to our advantage a little bit later. Okay, so at this point, I think we are all set with all of these frames, so I'll pick these up. And so now what you're gonna wanna do is just fill in these walls. You're gonna make all of these hollow. They don't need to be filled in with anything. You could fill them in because what will eventually happen is zombies will kind of wanna bang their way into these things and, and kind of, you know, make a mess and be a nuisance, just general zombie things, right? Okay, with all those four filled in, the only thing left to do is fill in the four corners like this here. We'll build these walls all the way up to the top. Now, in the Darkness Falls series, I'll pull up a little image here. So this is what I used. I used um, some special blocks to create a mural. And if you're wondering how to create murals like this yourself, this is actually an in-game mural that I found out in the wild that the fun pimps probably made. So I just copied it one for one. But if you would like to do your own and experiment with some of these types of shapes, you come into the destruction blocks and you can use these trim destroyed blocks here. They have full hit points, unlike these ones up here, which have less hit points than normal. But you can paint these uniquely and kind of connect them together to make interesting shapes like, you know, eyes and stuff like that. So that's just an FYI. I'm not gonna make the mural for this one. It just takes a lot of time. So I'm just gonna use regular cube shapes to fill this in. You know, on second thought, maybe I will just make one of them on this side right here. Just kind of show you how it goes. Okay, so there's these blocks here that give you like the weird broken kind of trim pieces, but there's also some others and they're in like the trim category. So this gives you the more geometric shapes to work with. So if I, if I lay this triangle in like so, you can see the two portions of it and you can paint them different colors and then we'll do like a nose there. Did like the cheekbones in those areas. Okay, how did the eyes go? It was this one, this one. I think it's those four like that. Then we get the cheekbones over here. There we go. Yeah, turn the helmet light on so we can see a little bit better. I think that's right. Oh no, there's the top of the skull up here. Just kind of like rounded over. Oh right, and then there was like the crack in the skull. Oh, that was super cool. Just like so. Okay, so it doesn't look like much, but let me get this painted for you so you can see how it looks. And then what I did on mine is I made this medicine cabinet color. It's like, it's white, but it's shiny white. And there you have it. That's the skull mural. Now, I was having a little bit of light RP fun when I was doing my playthrough. So I made this like a demonic kind of creature like this. Gave him some slick red horns. <laughs> just like that. Okay, so with the foundation done, what I'm gonna do now is just build up the walls again, the same shapes that we've been using. I'll build up the walls on all sides and I will, I'll do a total of five blocks. So, so we want a living area that's four blocks tall and then a fifth block for to hold up the roof, which will basically look a lot like what we have right here right now. So you might notice that I left these like long black pillars one block taller and that's because I'm gonna put a spike on the top of them using the cube quarter corner pyramid, just like so. And then I'm gonna come down here and I thought it might be nice to have a window. This is not something that I did before, but it's something that I do wanna try out now. And coming into my construction shapes, there's this security gate centered diagonal, which I think might just do the trick in here. And you know, personally, I don't think that looks half bad. So the base is now really starting to take shape. 
and you're going to start wanting to plan around doing some traps and things like that. So let me grab some electric fences and show you what I mean. One way of doing this is to just line electric fences all along the zombie corridor, just like this. But let's take these down and I'll show you another way of doing it. The alternative is to dig down a block and then we'll place another block down there for these fences to rest on. And then we'll basically, we're effectively sinking them down a block so that crawlers and zombies that have their legs cut off or maybe spiders will have an electric fence system to run into along with the regular zombies. But I'm also gonna just bring some pillars down here and put another set of fences on top just like this. I'm not sure why that's pink right now, so just ignore that. So that way you'll have two sets, one for the tall zombies and one, at least one for the short zombies. Okay, so the real question is here is, if you've made it in such a way, say this was like another two or three blocks wider, you might not have enough cord when you're trying to wire it up to come all the way over onto the other side and link it up. In this configuration here, you'll be fine. Of course, it does make it a lot easier if you can reach straight across and bring it over and not have to walk all the way around. Now, here's the consideration you have to have. If you want to link it up, just like I just did, where you're looking straight across and not having to like run around one by one, you're going to have to select a block that you can use tools through. I'll put a couple of examples down here just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so I have an assortment of block shapes here just so we can hammer home this example. So I can reach through here and grab this. Same thing with the circle. Same thing with the railing block. This is called a railing. Same thing with uh, whatever this thing is here. However, now we are at the arrow slit, which is probably my favorite block to use for this purpose, just because, you know, there's some immersion there that the, the wire is not clipping right directly through a concrete block, right? But you can't use your tool through this. You would have to come all the way around, grab your wire, and then string it back over. The unfortunate thing with all of these blocks is that cops can and will see you and spit at you through them. So if you happen to be over here during a horde night and there's a cop over there somewhere and he spits at you, he could hit all of these electronics and just des destroy everything. So the safest block to use in this on the front here is just going to be like a regular cube, something that will block cop spit and line of sight but you won't be able to use a tool through it. And unfortunately the wires will just kind of be clipping through it. So it's basically entirely up to you how you want to handle this. Do you want your wires to look authentic and look cool? Or do you want the functionality of just using a regular cube shape? I leave that up to you to decide for demonstration purposes today. I'm just gonna roll with the regular cubes. Okay, I had just built up the, the fighting position here, but I realized I was doing it wrong. So I'm gonna start over again. So essentially what we're doing here is we're pulling the floor out to be underneath that fifth block there where there, there's that like emergency electric fence. So basically this is where like your hatch is gonna be. It's where you're gonna be fighting your zombies. And this is like your last line of defense, this electric fence right here. So that if they do breach, they're gonna at least get stalled there until you can do some repairs. And now I'm going to make just a three block tall doorway in here. So let me just seal this in. And the reason we're gonna go three blocks tall is because me personally, you don't have to do it like this. You could just do a, a one block window like this and just kind of fortify it on both ends and hold the line right here. But I personally, I like to be able to kind of jump out and I like to be able to see if there's like dogs or spiders or something on the other side. So I typically go with a system kind of like this. I use the scaffolding plank. I'm gonna advance rotate that to get it in that orientation right there. And then I'm going to put a hatch there, which is on face rotation, so that'll open up downward. I'll put another block there and another block like that. So I have two steel hatches on the top. And then I'll also have, uh, I probably at least, I'll go with one on the bottom right here. This is usually how I do it. So I have like an emergency backup um, hatch there. But for the front, I'm going to recommend the, sca uh, not the scaffolding, the uh, railing block. So you just type in railing, you get this railing block right here. This is something that you can actually work through as we demonstrated earlier. So if you had your nail gun, you'd be able to repair the door or whatever kind of block you're, you're gonna use on the other side right there. And then if this breaks and you need to kind of hold them back, you can just open up your emergency hatch. Now, what I did wrong when I filmed this initially is that I, um, I didn't make the grenade shoots properly. So let's work on the grenade shoots. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually break some blocks. I'm gonna break this block here and 
that block there and also that one. Okay, so you'll just have to plan around this if this is the system you're gonna go with yourself. And I just like keeping it simple with mine. So I use um, ramps just like this. And oh no, I um, I did it wrong again. Sorry guys, <laughs> a little bit complicated. You're gonna leave that last one on there. You're gonna copy this. You'll do probably just an on face rotation pretty easy, just like so. And that gives you a nice kind of opening to either shoot a rocket down because a rocket launcher, you can shoot right through there or you can throw grenades, molotovs, possible, but maybe a little bit on the risky end of things. And then to cover these up, you have these wooden shutters, and then you can upgrade those to iron shutters and then to steel shutters if you have the materials, or you can craft these directly out of a workbench. So I'm just gonna grab these steel shutters. These are new as of Alpha 20, and uh, I don't think everyone necessarily knows that they exist, but they do, and they're great. And I like them a lot. I like them better than hatches personally. I'm just gonna put those on the top so that cops, if they're down there, uh, if they see me, they're not gonna kind of spit up at me. And then, so you could just open that up, you do your business down there and uh, close them up when you're done. Okay, so now it's time to do the outside of the fighting position. And there's one interesting little note that I want to, you to be aware of. And that is, if you put any block like this, what's this called here? This is a wedge 60 slope corner number two, as well as the number one, which we're gonna put right above that just like so. So if there's a demolition zombie or a cop and he blows up right here, you would expect that he would be damaging that block right there, but he won't because there's this block here on the outside of it, which shields the block behind it as long or whatever block it's covering. And so the block behind won't take any damage. It's just a little interesting thing to take note of. So we did those slope blocks like so, and then we're gonna do just regular cubes like that. And we're gonna on face a couple of these ramps like that. That gives us, um, well, I don't know what I, what I settled on for a name for something like this, but it gives you just some shielding, I guess. There was also a block I did on the top. I think it was the wedge 60 corner tip like this. And then I did like a nice little spike on the top like that. And then in keeping with the series, I made this cross on the front of it. Let me just paint that for you. Yep, that looks pretty good. The causeway is the series of blocks that you use to bring the zombies from the ground level up to your level. And you can use any block, well, just about any block for this. For example, you cannot use a pole in this orientation because it's off-centered and the zombies, when they take a line of approach, when they're walking, they will center on the block. And so obviously they would fall off of this. And so it's been coded so that zombies will not path on this block right here. However, if you use the centered block, they will path on that but there's better blocks to use for this configuration. The one that I'm gonna recommend, you can use a multitude of blocks, but I'm gonna recommend the security gate centered and you're gonna string this out, oh, I don't know, out about until the end of the wall here. The reason I like this block is because if you end up shooting it with your gun, you're not actually gonna break it. It's like a bulletproof kind of block. On top of it, I'm gonna recommend the pillar 0.025 and you're gonna lay that directly on top. Now, I don't think this one is bulletproof. However, it if the if there's demo blasts going off, it's going to shield the block behind it unless the, the demo happens to be kind of off-centered. And it's also, if like one of these blocks breaks, you have a backup block. And I'm gonna have you do the same thing on the bottom. So basically, this is a lot thicker and stronger of a causeway than it then meets the eye, right? Because even if they destroyed two blocks here, one, two, they would still path on that third block on the bottom. And so they would still be coming up to your position. Now, of course, we're replicating on this on four sides. So the chances of one breaking, although, you know, moderately high, you'll just be able to transfer them over to a different side if that happens. All right, so let's get into what makes this base so powerful. The ability to transfer zombies from one side to another at will. I've grabbed a vault door number three powered. Now, of course, you're not gonna have powered vault doors probably early on in the game. So you'll have to probably settle for having like a real door. Maybe you wanna make a real door up here at the front, something that you can manipulate from right here. You can put a regular door there and you could open and close it right through this railing block. But when once you're into the later game and you have access to the powered vault doors, these are how you wanna use them. When you set up your powered vault door, you do not want it to be in this orientation right here. By the way, to get this uh, to, to go sideways, you're just gonna select the on face rotation. You don't want it in this orientation because you can see the, the border, the frame of the door is very thick and zombies can and will walk over that frame. 
But if you put it in this orientation right here with the hinges that you can see right in the middle facing up, when you place that down, you saw that the door was actually flipped up kind of parallel to this causeway here. That, that way, when that door is powered and it's open, Zombies will be able to path over it. Now you can stand on the frame here, but kind of like I was demonstrating with the pole earlier, zombies don't think that they can do anything on this. So they might kind of, if you catch one that's already kind of got some momentum, they might be able to run right across it. But um, once they kind of recalculate their AI, they won't want to do that anymore. And so the only thing left to do here is to build a way for your zombies to get up to this level. You could do a ramp, you could do ladders, you could do blocks where they have to jump on each individual block all the way up, entirely up to you. Personally, I think I like the zombies to come up here because this is the trap, right? So I don't want to make it difficult for them to get into the trap. So basically I just make a nice clean staircase all the way up to the top. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make a temporary support structure right up to here. And at the top, I'll just place a regular block because that's there's just gonna be a regular block there at the top. And so this could just be like a big blocky looking staircase, but of course I want it to look a little bit better than that. So I'm gonna use, this is again, the same block that we used for the windows over here. This is the security gate diagonal. But what a lot of people don't understand is that you can actually advance rotate this to function just like a ramp. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna bring this all the way down to ground level. And then on the sides, I'm gonna start using ramps just like this. And I just I just think that this looks good. This is not really any particularly you know fancy function or anything like that. Then just a little bit of fancy business here on the top. And I think we are all set <laughs> now. The real test is going to be, is this going to collapse when I pull this out? Because this is looking like awfully precarious here. I think, in fact, what I'm going to do, because although that looks good from this angle, it does not really look good from this angle. I am going to just kind of um, like uh, make a support structure for it right here. OK, so there it is. And I'm going to leave this open as well, because uh, what I did before is I put a spotlight right about right here, kind of facing up just to get the lighting just right. So he turned on the stability. Stability looks red here, but it's not like the dark, dark red when it's when it's really not good, right? And so the only way this is going to become an issue is if um, all three of these blocks here get knocked out. We've got the two pipes and then the one security gate. Or if um, several of these blocks over here get knocked out. And you've probably encountered a scenario before where you made a staircase and then zombies got kind of pinned on the side here and they couldn't get up and over. So they ended up destroying your staircase. And there's a really, really easy way to prevent that. One way is literally just to do this. If you just did this on the side of your staircase, the zombies will walk around and then they'll go right up. No problem. I absolutely guarantee it. But there's another block that looks even better. And that is going to be, you're going to go into your catwalks and there's a triangular catwalk V2 wedge plate only. You're going to advance to rotate that and you're just going to slap it right on there. And that it, it's not acting as a shield. It's acting by redirecting the zombie pathing so that they don't even think that they can um, jump up over this. They will completely think that they just have to walk around and they'll never, pretty much never ever get stuck there. Like you could make this out of cobblestone and pretty much be confident that the, the zombies will never break that on their way up your ramp. Additionally, this gives you multiple paint color options and looks really, really cool. And looking good is like half the reason that I build bases like this. <laughs> that is just my style, like to look good. Look good, feel good, feel good, fight good. Or at least die looking good, one way or the other. Man, that is looking really good now. It's probably three or four blocks taller than how I made it originally, but um, I do like the, the just the added security of being higher off the ground. Okay, so what I have to do now is replicate this whole building process for the fighting position, the causeway, and the ramp three more times, and you guys just to get to sit back and watch for about five seconds. Okay, well, there you have it. Those are all the four fighting positions all taken care of. All the electric fences are hooked up. All of the grenade chutes are done. The hatches are in place. Pretty much, you could fight the horde right now. And I wanted to comment real quickly is that you only have to build one of these at a time. Like, I know this is a very time-consuming, massive base build, but I'm assuming that you might have friends playing with you or you might have the luxury of time, in which case you could just build this over the course of a week or two in-game. I wanted to do another sort of special system here just to further exemplify the, the fact that you can cover up a block with another block and protect the block behind it. So the block I'm going to play with here is the wedge inside corner top. 
I'm just gonna put it in in such a way where there's this like diamond like embossed into it just because I think it looks cool I'm just gonna paint that so it kind of looks cool embedded in there like that and then I'm gonna do you one better you're gonna copy this shape right here what was this one called again this is the wedge 60 slope corner put it in just like this here and that way all of the four blocks that are behind this like diamond shape that I put here are protected against blasts so if I'm checking here any block that's covered up right now is protected from blast. So this one here that I'm pointing at is not protected. In order to protect it, let's just do this. And then we'll do another one up here. Might try to select a better color scheme here in a bit. But yeah, just in case you got multiple demo blasts going off out here, this white painted brick wall will not be taking any damage. Oh, and the one thing I noticed when I was doing the other sides is that uh, this pole right here is currently not connected to the base apart from being connected to the security gate. So you're going to want to probably select perhaps this half side centered pillar. Put that right there just so it's connected to the main base. What I am going to do here is I'm going to dig out a pit. We're going to have a nice big grenade pit in here. So we just knock all this stuff out. So for this one, I'm going to say I'm going to use this uh, special. What is it called again? The block replace tool. We're going to replace blocks with air and then replace blocks of same type. So that means when I click on a clay block, it's gonna replace all the clay blocks with air. And then I've selected also some of these stone blocks. And so if I click on a stone block, it'll replace those with air. And th hopefully that just you know teaches you how to use that tool. It's kind of handy if you're just doing kind of creative building. And then hit backspace to disable and we'll just line this wall out. Okay, as for the way for zombies to get out, I'll just show you what I've done before and then you can decide for yourself what you wanna do. Okay, what I've done for the first demonstration is just, I call these jumping blocks. They're just gonna jump one by one right, right on out. They're gonna fall down there first, then they're gonna start clustering up right here. Now it's gonna be a mess right here and zombies will start breaking blocks. So best practice would be to fortify this position a little bit. And to do that, I like to use plates. So I'll put a plate right like this and then I'll also put a plate, uh, we'll put plates just like this over here too. And it's uh, getting kind of difficult to see that, so let's paint it. Then you want to get this plate corner, and you're going to slide these in here to kind of protect the stair blocks. And there should be a plate corner filler block right there. Plate diagonal filler, it's called. And we'll just make this one red so we can see it. And you can just kind of like flush up these little borders just like that. Oh, Temcam. You okay, bro? I think Temcam starved to death. Tebcam, you okay, bro? Anyway, get that man some food and water already. All right, so this is the system you've got right here. Alternatively, you could put some like emergency backup ladders like right here. And um, let's, let's do that because I actually don't know. I think zombies would prefer ladders over jumping, but maybe you, you put the ladders in and then if the ladders fail, then you have a way for them to jump out after that. Or maybe they'll decide to do both. I'm not sure. This would be a little bit of an experiment for both of us. Okay, so that's a little bit of an egress path for them. And the whole idea is to not make it impossible, but to make it difficult so that they'll stay down here and you can get good use out of your grenade pits up there. Because when there's like 15 or 25 zombies clustered up right here, you can get really good bang for your buck on the pipe bombs or grenades. All right, I was just gonna see, we're gonna do replace all blocks of same type, keep paint of replaced blocks. We're gonna copy this concrete cube and we're gonna paste it over here. All right, that's just gonna look nicer, basically. I don't think that you really have to do this at all to make this big, big pad, but <laughs> you can't deny that a nice smooth surface like this is just satisfying in some way. All right, that one seemed to work just fine, so let's do it again here. Boop, and a nice pad. So this will be like our full example wing, and these will be like the minimalist example wings. So let's head inside here, and let's talk about the central portion here. This is where the dart traps are gonna go. So we'll pick these up. You okay down there, Temkim? You need a snack? Here, how about a, a couple shams? Throw, throw down a handful of shams for them. So what I'm gonna recommend is that you have at least four dart traps. You're also gonna need the vault hatch v3 powered you don't need this but it's going to be really fun to set up once you have it i'm just going to set four blocks down just like so and then i'm going to set four dart traps up just like so and so this window right here that we've made will be like a shooting lane for the dart trap now of course you don't want to be standing here when this is going on but if you had to take a break to do some repairs check on the roof do some um 
I don't know, checking out the windows or repairing the electric fences, you're going to be able to turn this on and activate it so that um, it'll kind of hold off the zombies while you're away. Or if you want kind of an AFK base, just turn everything on and <laughs> chill out somewhere. And so here's where things start to get a little bit tricky, okay? So there's a way to do this. I'm going to put a ladder piece in there. So set that in. And then I'm going to get like the ventilation shaft duct thing, whatever it's called. Ah, here we go. Yes, air duct. We're just going to set that as if it were like a tube. All of these will have one block on top of them. And then you're going to grab a railing corner and you're going to put it just like this on all four sides. And the reason why we put the ventilation duct there is because you're going to put a switch just like that on all four sides. This is going to be the switch that controls the dart trap. And then I like the arch one for this position right here. And this is just to enclose the electronics, right? So if a cop is spitting in here or you get a mutated zombie or something like that, you don't want explosions to be able to hit your sensitive electronics or your dart trap for that matter. So by just closing that in like that, I think it's pretty darn safe. And now here's the real magic. You're gonna put a the, the powered vault door right on the face of this dart trap. And I like it opening up personally, so you can kind of walk under it if it's open, if you have to. And once all four of those are in place, you might wanna do something to kind of cover things up here so it's not quite so exposed. It's not gonna help against cop vomit or any like demonic blast if you happen to be playing like Darkness Falls, but just aesthetically, I like to kind of cage it in just like that. And then I don't know, just something kind of fancy here on the floor, I guess. Okay, so that's your like uh, power tower, <laughs> we'll call it here in the center. Okay, and there's one last thing for the power tower here, and that is this, this space right here. You need to occupy this block space because currently, if I were to, let's just demonstrate, if I knock this out, there goes everything. Okay, so let's make sure that doesn't happen by putting a block first right back there, set one of these back on, and then I'm just gonna pick some type of a block here to occupy this, this space up here. I think really the perfect one is going to be the plate ramp and rotate it just so that the, the 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 wider edge is kind of on the bottom, just like so. Good. Now if I knock that out, everything does not come crashing down and I can just replace this very easily if I have to. So that switch is going to have to be hooked up to both the door and the trap so that when you flip that switch, the dart trap will start shooting and the door will open. And that kind of gives you some indication that like uh, everything is live and you should stand clear. What I'd like to do now is just get ourselves a way up to the rooftop. So what we should do now is try to extract Temcam out of there. So it's okay that there's a skipped piece here because this block space is actually occupied by that air duct, but you can just push this ladder all the way down to the bottom and you can join up with Temcam down here. Uh, let me just stand on your head for a second there. And the reason I wanted to do this is just because you might want to come down here for repairs. You might want to dig a hole all the way to bedrock and start mining down there. Or you might just want to maybe have like a, like a subfloor for your base where maybe you put some um, like electronics, like your generators and stuff like that. Because let's see, if I pour it through the wall, that just puts me right here. Like this, this area right here is not like liable for a lot of... Um, fire from the zombies or demolition blasts or anything like that. So you might be able to safely pop like four generators in here. I think I will do just that and we'll kind of put like two generators here. We'll have uh, one half of the base powered by one generator and the other half from the other one. Okay, so now we have a good time to do the example of how this is gonna work. Just like so, and you can see the darts going right down range. And then when you're all set, you're ready to fight again, you can just turn that back off and this will be shielded so that uh, if a cop spits at you, it will not destroy the dart trap. Obviously, I was just going to test it out for you guys. It is nine connections. So I've strung up nine of the ten, but will not let me do the tenth one. Great. Well, that's the mess we have to deal with in here. Okay, so here is probably right where I'm standing right now. It's probably where you'll do the majority of your fighting. So upstairs that corresponds to this block right here and so this is where birds will likely be trying to attack you from and so if you put a blade trap right there the birds will never ever become an issue for you that's four blade traps and you don't even really have to have them all powered at the same time oh which reminds me <laughs> there's supposed to be a switch in this whole mess of stuff over here okay so i've changed everything else to to be on switches so we we flip that switch and all of a sudden all the wires are hot. We close that and we're good. So you're going to have to also bring that switch over to that door so that when everything is hot, that door is uh, open so that it's a pathable area for zombies. So then we go switch, 
to this, and then this to the blade trap. So whatever side we choose to fight on, we uh, hook that up. The blade trap above us is spinning, correct? Yes. And the door is open. All of the wires are hot, and this is hot as well. We just have to turn it on if we need it. It is quite a process. I won't deny it, but if you want good things in life, you gotta work hard for them. Now, if you're playing Darkness Falls and you're trying to build this base, you're also going to need a defense for Succubi. And um, they're gonna be able to shoot fireballs that will destroy these concrete blocks up here in one hit. So instead of blade traps, I would recommend just using plates and you completely cover this the ceiling the rooftop here with um, plates for example a catwalk plate you're just gonna lay these all over double layer your entire rooftop and then instead of the blade traps you're gonna use turrets and you're gonna just put the turrets over here facing the middle and pointing up a little bit but just a reminder if you do want to use this base in darkness falls i do recommend that you watch at least a couple of episodes from my darkness falls series and you'll kind of learn some of the pearls and pitfalls of this type of a base design in Darkness Falls. Okay, so the last element to this base is purely aesthetic, and it's making these archways that kind of cover the front of the base. And so there's these uh, specific arch blocks that you're gonna be looking for, and they are these ones here, arch curves. Start off with a wall cap, string it up with the wall piece, Okay, so leaving a space of three before the top, you get arch curve base, arch curve middle, arch curve filler, arch curve top, arch curve top middle, and same thing on this side. Base, middle, filler, top, regular cubes, wedge 60 tips, wedge 60s, and a regular square. Oh, just three more, <laughs> we're almost done. Okay, the last thing was just the mega crosses on the front. It's very easy to achieve this. You're just gonna use these um, cube quarter T side centers, and you do the cube eights on the sides, and then a cube quarter side centered for the top. Then if I recall correctly, I think I had like a pointy tip on the end of it. And by, and by pointy tip, I mean the side centered pyramid quarters on face, just like so. Okay, so that just about does it. I'm gonna just do some final painting and then we'll close things out. Well, that'll do it for my invincible horde base building tutorial. Well, maybe not entirely invincible. It does require a modest effort to run it during horde night, but I think that if you're willing to put the effort into building what we around here call the Citadel of Steel, then this base will pay dividends for you for many horde nights to come. But anyway, my friends and fellow survivors, I think we can call it a day. Hey everyone, my name is Temriki, and I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.